The king said, invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning I'd like to read a pastoral letter that I sent to all members of the congregation this week and follow up with a few words on this morning's gospel passage from Matthew. First the letter, pastoral letter to the people of St. Peter's. Dear people of God at St. Peter's, you may have heard a little about new things at St. Peter's, including the way of St. Paul. This letter is to share news and invite your feedback and questions. I also ask for your prayers and your participation. Over the past year since I arrived as rector, we've listened, prayed, and served together. More than half of St. Peter's families welcomed me into your homes, and I'm still making home visits. Others have seen me beside your hospital bed. Some of you have come in for a talk or found other ways to share your concerns for your life, your family, and your church. I thank you for your generosity and your honesty. I thank you for your openness to being pastor and people together. I take your time and your trust seriously. I thank God for this, too. You have told me a few unexpected things, but what I've heard from you largely matches what you wrote in St. Peter's Parish profile as you searched for a new rector. You have prayed to God most or all of your life. You believe God is making something new at St. Peter's. You hear a call to connect with God, one another, and our neighbors in new ways. You are hopeful because this call is of God. You are concerned <coughs> because the way forward is not clear. You are seeking a way forward, what our ancestors would call the way. You ask me to walk with you and lead you. That's a solid start on any journey. We've spent this year getting to know one another. We've made some changes. Just having a rector again after three years is a change. Meeting a new priest who is not the Reverend Dennis Nichols or the Reverend Gerald Rice is a change. Early on, we introduced the healing service to the Sunday worship in response to your requests. We are making new connections in the community and in the wider church with more to come. Our presence on the internet has never been stronger or easier to find. We have rebuilt our finance team and taken a firmer hold on how we raise, spend, and invest the money entrusted to the church. We are trying new things in stewardship and fundraising. We have our first new worship leaders at 7.30 and 10.30. We are beginning to look beyond ourselves in new ways. We are learning to meet our neighbors again and to listen to them for their part in God's call to us. We are learning to share good news with our neighbors more often, earlier, and in more targeted ways. We still have much to learn things to try, some will succeed, some inevitably will fail, and we'll try something else. And that's okay. That's being the church. The Way of St. Paul program is a help in all this. I like the Way of St. Paul because it supports what God and we are doing. It helps give shape and consistency to the things we are already doing, and the things we will do. All rooted in the call to be God's people <coughs> in the world. 
It asks the right questions and asks our answers in prayer and action. As we seek to grow in faith and number, the way of St. Paul reminds us that we are not alone. It helps, it brings the help of our diocese and the companionship of other parishes who are going through these same questions. It reminds us we are not the first or only ones to walk this road. It reminds us we are going somewhere good. A copy of the Way of St. Paul pamphlet has been in the Sunday bulletins these past few weeks and is included again today. The <coughs> copy was sent out with this letter to everyone's homes. I invite you to look at it again and from time to time again still. I ask you to say a prayer as we each take as we take each next step in this journey that God has put us on. We will have a parish kitchen table talk on the way of St. Paul and our effort to grow the church generally on Sunday, October 29th during the coffee hour. We will also find a way to have something after the 7.30 service that will be coordinated with people who typically attend the 7.30 service. You are invited. I hope you will mark your calendar and join the conversation. I'm available to discuss your questions, hopes, and concerns. God loves you, and so do I. A brief word about today's gospel passage. This parable of the banquet guests from the Gospel of Matthew talks about the feast that the king has set. In it, Jesus takes a prophetic, prophetic role <coughs> in denouncing the religious leaders of his day who had abandoned their mission and been corrupted by the ways of the world in collaborating with the occupying Roman government and being greedy and doing everything except enjoying and sharing the banquet that God had set for his people. In this story, you heard about the guests who did not wear the wedding robes. In Jesus' day, the host of a wedding banquet would provide special dress robes for a major feast, like a wedding banquet. And they were considered part of the hospitality of hosting the banquet. To decline the robe was to decline part of the hospitality. It's kind of like crashing a party just to show up for the food. <coughs> the prophetic voice that Jesus offers, the condemnation of those who would not come to the banquet and of the man who would not accept the hospitality of the wedding robe, are harsh words. They remind us that Jesus' first hearers took this call of the kingdom and its consequences seriously and that we have every reason to believe Jesus did too. But I want to focus on the words spoken by the king himself in this parable. You remember them? They're my scripture sentence today. Invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet, said the king. The king has set a feast. When we gather at this altar to share the bread and the wine, we have a taste of that feast that we take into us, that we become part of God as we take the body of Christ into us and we become part of the body of Christ. This feast is given freely and joyfully and in abundance by our God. It is always with us. It is his great desire, his eagerness even, that we be at the banquet and we share it. Share it with God and share it always with others. The king said, invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Amen.